presentation is, as was predicted after the reveal of the new 3D look compared to the series 2D roots, not the best thing in the world. It's very simple from the characters to the backgrounds, and it definitely feels cheaper from a production standpoint than most other fighting game franchises. I'll give it credit for one thing though, it has character. All the fighters are visually interesting to look at and impressively varied for the character count. <laughs> The closest game you can compare King of Fighters 14 to is easily Street Fighter. Every character has a bunch of regular moves, multiple tiers of super moves and long combos, chainable together to make huge health bar slaughtering techniques. All done by circle motions on the D-pad and some button pressing. Throws and cancelling still exist. New from that series though is a max mode which helps you attack faster and do better special moves, a roll to escape some attacks, and different levels of jumping, known as hopping, for more diverse aerial combat. The most obvious change is that there's three fighters on each team, and when the first is out of health, the second jumps into the next round. Super meter is carried over as well, so that the order of your characters is important too. Your character you can best get your super moves out with is best at the back. The upside to having so many entries is that the mechanics common to the series have been polished to a mirror sheen. This has the odd effect of making the game seem really stiff and even unpleasant to begin with. Moving, hopping, super moves, even chains can feel like they don't actually, well, move. But when a mechanical understanding of KOF starts to sink in, everything makes more sense and the technical side of the game really fleshes itself out and it becomes really enjoyable just to beat on the other team, whether by winning by the skin of your teeth or a total wipeout with just one character. This isn't a game designed to move or look flashy in the slightest. Everything in the game is actually trying to be a technical fighting game. The heavily diverse range of 50 characters helps greatly as well. Every one of them has a different set of basic attacks and special moves, and I haven't played one character that isn't viable in a three-person team. This does have the adverse side effect of having tons of moves to remember. A way to display compressed move lists on screen would be awesome instead of having to pause and remember as many as I can. There's definitely something to be said about the game's tutorial, or rather, lack of tutorial. The most you get is a series of small, one-move explanations for one character. The game fails to explain some of the most crucial things I only learned by googling the series. The importance of hopping, input cancelling, or even how some characters moves as opposed to work simply don't come up in the tutorial. I will also always bash a game that doesn't have tutorials for individual characters. I guess you could argue that the trials will teach you neat combos for the characters, but not how to actually play the character at least partway effectively. You're going to need a lot of time and probably a guide in hand to figure this one out. Survival and Time Attack are exactly what they sound like, except these are only one-on-one -on -one modes. Something that utilizes the three-on-three -three gameplay a bit more would be great. The AI difficulty is pretty sucky though. There's five levels. The third level, which is the default, left me capable of playing the entire story mode without continuing once the first time I booted up the game. Upping that to five resulted me in not being able to get past stage one. Multiplayer has the usual ranked and unranked lobbies, training, replays, leaderboards, and profile stuff to fiddle with. The net code is surprisingly good. Finding anyone to play with in my home country of Australia is nightmarish, but playing with people overseas goes pretty damn well. There's understandable slowness from the game trying to stay in sync, but saying that it's unplayable is an absolute lie, and that's always a nice surprise. Notably, every time I tried to get online, I had my ass handed to me on an increasingly polished silver platter, and nobody wanted to play more than one game with me, but this is me we're talking about. I'd probably forget how to dragon punch if I was given the opportunity. There's one problem with trying to play King of Fighters, or rather, almost every other fighting game on the PlayStation 4 as well. The PS4 directional pad sucks for fighters, being too hard to effectively quarter circle or hop in this case, and the analog stick has so much trouble is that it's really imprecise. If you have a Vita, I'd fully recommend playing via remote play. The D-pad works so much better. A second controller from Hori or another manufacturer would be miles ahead of the DualShock 4 as well. Single player content amounts to a basic set of story, survival, time attack and trial modes. The story mode serves as a traditional arcade mode presented by relatively cheesy FMV cutscenes, with every team of three characters getting a special ending if played all together, and some neat character dialogue scenes available if two specific characters meet on the field. 
Since this is game number 14 in the series though, there's a lot of stuff that happened that the game decides to just not go over. Thankfully the main story is standalone and basically not there to begin with, skipping the FMVs is easy enough after you've seen them once. The Japanese dub, which is the only dub available, is fine too. I didn't feel myself wanting to turn off the audio, not by any stretch of the imagination. King of Fighters 14 is an odd beast of a fighting game that has tons of depth and great character variety. It's not much to look at and it does a terrible job at teaching you how to play, but once you get it down, it's one of the most satisfying fighting games out there to learn and destroy at. If you have the time to get over that brick wall, this will probably be one of your favourite fighting games. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other review videos, and if you missed any of the daily news, be sure to check out The Daily Niche right here at NicheGamer.com.